Do you have an unforgettable player character entrance in an encounter? I do, thanks to Tiflings. I love when players go the extra mile to bring flavorful scenes to the game table. My players were tracking down a villain who had grasped a few small villages under his tyrannical claws. He became an oppressing outlaw force in the region, extorting villagers and kidnapping the young members of families who refused to pay his tithe. Players knew that a former member of those villains was in a tavern, but didn't know who he was. But our Tifling player knew what to do. Don't worry, I got this. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to use thaumaturgy to scare the shit out of the entire tavern. I don't want to get in. I want the tavern doors to slam open, and as soon as I step inside, I want one window after the other to fling open and shut. I want all lanterns of the tavern to flicker into an eerie purple. I'm gonna get in with my hood on, and when all eyes are on me, I'll make my eyes go into flaming purple, and as I get my hood off, I want to fling the nearest chair into the air with my tail. And then, with a thunderous voice, I'll say, I'm here to collect the muzzle soul. You can either repent and confess where he is, or I'll take your own soul instead. And then I'll just wait to see whom everybody looks at, or whoever appears to have seen the devil himself. Because he has. Should he roll performance, intimidation? Nah, just take the guy, he's all yours, and thanks for that scene. Tiflings were introduced in the very first Planescape campaign setting, way back in the second edition of D&D. In third edition, they became a playable race in the Forgotten Realms campaign setting. They finally acquired the status of a core D&D race in fourth edition, along with Dragonborns, and gained instant popularity. Why? Come on! A hero who looks like a devil? That's the ultimate level of theatrical corners one can reach. One D&D brings some additional flavor for Tieflings thanks to the Infernal, Catonic, and Absol legacies, which expand Tieflings beyond their devilish heritage, adding demons, other th fiends, and even cadaverous looks. The newly introduced Ardlings have a similar race mechanics design, with three celestial legacies, Exalted, Heavenly, and Idyllic. I think both those races have a similar power level, and that both of their current design still needs a small buff. I'll make a direct comparison with Elves, since Elves are among the most powerful races and have a similar design with both Tieflings and Ardlings in one D&D. Both Elves and Tieflings have dark vision. Next, Elven lineages and Tieflings fiendish, fiendish legacies have the exact same design. One can trip and one small buff at first level, a first level spell at third level, and a second level spell at fifth level. So far, that's a tie. Then, Elves have keen senses, which gives proficiency on perception, one of the most useful skills in the game. Tieflings have the Thaumaturgy cantrip, which despite some cool opportunistic uses, uh, cannot be described as a powerful trait. For Tieflings, that's it, but not for Elves, who still get the Fey ancestry and the trance traits. When I look at that comparison, it's very clear to me that Tieflings are below par, not by much, but below. Even though Ardlings have a, are a new race, as they were built mirrored at Tieflings as their celestial counterpart, I think that they also need a small spin. Ardlings have a similar race designed to Tieflings and Elves, so we can keep going with the same comparison. Ardlings' celestial legacies are identical to Fiendish legacies or Elven lineages. Ardlings seem not to have a small first level buff, but, that's, but the reason for that is all three celestial legacies have the same radiant damage resistance. That, by the way, is a small flavor that could be adjusted. Why not resistant against, resistance against force and psychic damages for two of them? But that's a side note. The only other race trait Ardlings have is angelic flight, which leads us to a pound-for-pound -pound comparison of that trait against the remaining Tiefling's traits, Dark Vision and Thaumaturgy. 
For me, those traits are roughly on par, so that Arlings and Tieflings are also on par. But remember, Tieflings, and with that, Arlings, are a bit below par against Elves, and therefore they should both get a small buff. Some people are concerned about the Ardling's angelic flight trait, as in, you know, flight on first level. But I don't think it's overpowered at all. You can only use it a number of times equal to its proficiency bonus, which is 2, on initial levels. Then, you can only move your base speed with it, and you have to land somewhere at the end of your movement. That's basically 30 feet upwards. Come on, folks! Give my rogue a silk rope, and a hook, and we see each other up there. Seriously, I'm very hap happy with this flight mechanic. I think D&D finally managed to incorporate it on a balanced way for first-level characters. Which brings us back to my point. Both Tieflings and Ardlings need a small nudge to reach the same power level of Elves and other fine folks. And I can think of two options that would be a good fit. The first one would be simply giving both races advantage on charisma saving throws. That would fit the lower and upper planes flavor of those races, and it would be a useful trait for all classes across the board. The second option would be something like a celestial or fiendish aura, which would provide proficiency on one charisma based skill of the player's choice. In one D&D, Humans, Elves, and Halflings already have traits that provide skill proficiencies, so that should not be a problematic design approach. Tieflings already had a cool flavor which will probably get expanded in 1D&D, along with the introduction of their celestial counterpart, Ardlings. I like the mechanics design presented for both races in 1D&D, but I think they're still lagging a bit behind when compared to the most powerful races, Elves, Dwarves, and Humans. I wouldn't be surprised if both of them were to get small buffs in new iterations, iterations of 1D&D. Would you?